from San Francisco, it's The Cube, covering VMware Radio 2019, brought to you by VMware. Hey, welcome back to The Cube's exclusive coverage of VMware's Radio 2019. Lisa Martin with John Furrier. John, we started really bright and early this morning with a very excited Pat Gelsinger, VMware, this is the 15th radio. Radio is R&D, innovation, offsite. There's about 1,800 VMware engineers from lots of BUs. Very competitive event, very passion-driven event, and really just is a, what a great manifestation of the VMware culture and the spirit of innovation. This is the best of the best event, and this is the story around radio 2019 is really accumulation of multiple years, as you pointed out, of cultural innovation, engineering. That's an, VMware has always been an engineering culture, coming out of Stanford, and from day one they've had that, 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 that guiding principle. They've also been open and transparent, as we heard on the CUBE interviews today. That has created the culture of community. Open source dives beautifully into it. And so radio is about that accumulation of the talent. It's the best of the best internally. They submit papers, it's a bottoms up process, so it's truly a meritocracy from an engineering standpoint. But it's a culture of engineering and their job is to come up with the future. And what's notable about this event is it's the second year now the Cube's been here. Last year was the first year they've invited press, so uh, three outlets from the media were allowed, we're one of them. And we get exposed, we get to look under the hood and look at the engine of innovation coming down the road for VMware and their partners. So, it's a super exciting event. Radio is a community within VMware that's now global, 50% outside of North America and the United States. All bottoms up, a hive mind, we heard that here. Really successful for VMware to continue this, bring in the press in, get the stories out there, take that transparency and open message from the content. We can share it, we get access to the data. It's a beautiful co-creation formula with theCUBE and VMware. It's a success, and their, their challenge is, can they take it global and extend it? And this is day four of Radio 19, and you can hear the amount of people that are still here, still passionate. These are projects that they're doing outside of their day job. So the transparency that you talked about, I loved when we were talking with David Tenenhaus about the bottoms up approach, that this is not a set agenda. You're gonna, we're going to talk about blockchain and IoT and security. This is driven, as you said, from thousand plus submissions of, of people who want to have papers people don't presented want, here. People don't want to leave because this is like a kid in the candy store. You know, it's like you know, being intoxicated with technology and there's so much content here. Now, that's also a, a bellwether and a, a barometer of the company. Um, if R&D is weak, you don't have the innovation. Um, there's companies that don't really invest in R&D, they wouldn't have this kind of mojo or this kind of excitement. But VMware prides themselves on doing 15% R&D that's way outside the box. The rest is all done within the constraints of what they're doing in the market. So relevance is high, but still room to play and dream the future. And again, I've always believed you can't dream it up, you can't build it. Now of course, VMware, all about, as every business should be, we need to be developing products and solutions and services that the market needs to solve real world problems. One of the cool things we learned about today, John, is from the EMEA CTO, John Bagley, is the CTO and, uh, Ambassador Program, the CTOA program, where there are folks, and this is also a competitive yeah. program, it's a, a, a couple, I think you said a four year tenure yeah. to, re, to get folks uh, through the program, but being out in the field, in customer sites, learning about all these enterprise organizations and what they actually need. So in that spirit of openness that you talked about, they're bringing in yeah. customer information, building and fostering relationships so that what they're investing in from an R&D standpoint is going to be able to solve customer problems that they don't even know they have today. You know, that champion program, the ambassador CTO program it's that Joe mentioned, what's interesting about VMware, and this is what I love, I admire about the company, as well as companies like AWS and Amazon uh, Web Services, the people are smart and they think about scaling. So, you know, that's kind of a cliche these days. How does it scale? Makes you look smart if you ask that question. But VMware actually thinks about how to scale. And so, the problem that they had was, 
They had these field CTOs that were out evangelizing with customers half the time and doing internal real CTO work around architecture with the teams to build great stuff and move that to market. They, were, they couldn't scale. So they used their community of their own ecosystem just to find people to come in and replicate. You heard Joe Bell, I had to be, I had to, I had to be Steve Harrod because he can't be everywhere. That's the mindset of this culture, and I think they have a real opportunity to crush it in open source. They have a real opportunity to take the radio culture and superimpose that in as a, as a new way to do work, new way to create distributed, decentralized teams, and ultimately better software. And at the end of the day, they have to attract great engineers and keep them, work on hard problems, because look at Pat's ambitious. And we know Pat, what he says and what's real, you know, they're all catching up to Pat. Pat has great vision and he's nailing it, but the engineer's got to build what Pat says they got to do. When he says abstracting away Kubernetes as an abstraction layer, yeah, that sounds simple, but it's really hard to do. <laughs> Absolutely, I want to get your perspective too on this, not just the culture of innovation that you, you talked about that VMware has had for a very long time, but also in the spirit of VMware leveraging their innovation programs like radio to attract and retain this high quality talent, from your perspective, how does a conference like this, which is kind of academic in nature, it's kind of like a science fair for engineers, how does it differ from some of the other companies like a Google that say, we have innovation programs? In your perspective, how is this different? Well Google, well, Google actually is fairly similar in the sense that they came out of Stanford. They have that kind of ethos of academic. Facebook is exactly the opposite. He, he wants to be Bill Gates and be like Microsoft, as I was saying the other day. Google's internal stuff is pretty strong. They don't externalize it, and that's why Google Cloud's having such a hard time gaining market share, is that they're not good on the external game. Everything is a SaaS offering, it's all programmable. They're awesome at technology, but they're not good at externalizing it. So I think Google's struggle is not a lot of internal to external translation. What radio has done successfully, and we heard a little bit here was, they took it from the Palo Alto bubble, which Google lives in, and they've extended it beyond to the rest of the world, so 50% of the radio attendees here are from outside the United States. So what they got right is they've actually externalized it better. They're allowing press to come in. The storytelling that we're doing that's going on, the collaboration here, is about people collaborating. That's why this is successful. And in a world where everything's open and information's freely available, there's an audience for high-end tech nerd activity. This is this meets the high bar of the geeks of the best of the best, and so why isn't it being covered? Well, it is, we are here. It is, you're right, we are here. And also, you know, if you look at, it's one thing for companies to have innovative cultures, but it's another thing, some of the key elements that really can catalyze innovation are partnerships, diversity that come to mind, both of which VMware does very, very well. Big, foci on partnerships, which mm -hmm. we've seen and heard about here as well, as well as not just diversity and gender and things, but also thought diversity and how groups from completely disparate business units can come together either yeah. organically before radio or even maybe even probably, and can you imagine the hallway conversations yeah. that are going on here where suddenly these different ideas are coming together. Partnerships and diversity are really catalysts for VMware's innovation. Well, that's a great point. I mean, one, the first, on the partnership side, clearly a catalyst because of multi-cloud and cloud native, you're seeing that. Diversity is a home run for them because they are a diverse culture, but look at how many women are here. Not many, I mean still, more than some, still a lot more work to do. But diversity of opinion, the inclusion that VMware has, they're very inclusive companies, so it's not like, I just don't think there's enough population of women, in my opinion, that, are, that are, can earn their community, but they're inclusive. There's different people, different backgrounds, different technical backgrounds, so from a, di quote, diversity, skill set, yeah. it's a melting pot. You got people talking about carbon fiber, sustainability, to you know, Kubernetes, all kind of coming together. So I think diversity is a real strength for them. So we heard, uh, I know you had a really, really intriguing blockchain conversation today. We talked a lot about some of those emerging technologies. VMworld 2019, which theCUBE will be out for, the, I believe, the 10th year, mm -hmm. is just around the corner. Yeah. What excites you about some of the things that you heard today that you think we might hear more about What in excites me about VMworld is what Pat Gelsinger said off camera, that it's going to be ton of news, ton of activity, and I think if you look at what VMware is doing, again, like I said, Pat Gelsinger's got an amazing vision, and I think he's cleared the runway or sailed away from the icebergs 
VMware is in a really good market position right now. They have um, great growth going on, and look at the organic innovation here at Radio, amazing. Content solid, people are still buzzing for it. They, they could probably stay here for a week, two weeks. Acquisitions, Cloud Health, Bitnami. Again, two smart acquisitions. They're making smart deals. The ecosystem's evolving. It's a new VMware, so I think VMworld is going to be, have a spring to a step this year. I think you see a lot of action. Uh, we'll have two cube sets again this year. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be a different company next 10 years, VMware, than it was the past 10 years. Well, I'm excited to be there with the Cube two sets, as you mentioned. My interest is certainly heightened after some of the things we heard today. John has always had yeah, a blast co-hosting with you. You got some awesome swag to go home with. Till next time, yeah. right? All yeah. right, for John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching our exclusive coverage of VMware Radio 2019 from San Francisco. Thanks for watching.